Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe so that maybe your dad will actually understand you for once. Gosh! Maybe. Today we're building Kylo Ren or Ben Solo, but I haven't seen Rise of Skywalker yet, so I'm assuming it's still Kylo. By the way, there will be no spoilers for Rise of Skywalker in this video, so try and keep them out of the comments. The sequel trilogy started off by letting us know that Star Wars is basically the same story as Sisterhood of the Traveling Plants, where genes continue to grow more powerful the further they travel. Yeah, it's a really bad pun. Let's move on. Five videos on a week is kind of wearing on me. Intimidated Squidward, try to imagine him in his underwear. He's high! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a big boy sword. The kind of sword that says, I'm an adult. I know that isn't Santa, it's just Uncle Chewie in a red suit. Next, we need to load that sword up with radiant damage to carve through rebel scum. Finally, we'll get scary, like dangerously scary. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you're keeping your strength and charisma high. Strength will be number one. You built your own lightsaber and made it a bronze sword. Charisma after that, you've got a very high military rank in the first order at a very young age. Age. Probably nepotism because of your grandfather, but you've also got some big force powers, so it's a bit of both. Constitution next, you take a shot from a bowcaster, then run up a mountain and have a lightsaber fight. That's Moxie. Follow that up with dexterity, even though you mostly focus on your power, you're pretty quick. Wisdom's a bit low, you just kind of have anger problems, and by kind of, I mean definitely do. But we'll dump intelligence. You never did reading, writing, and arithmetic, you learned murder, murder, and murder. Han and Leia are both human, so if you put them together, you get a loxodon. Wait. No, very inhuman. But an Asimar would work really well for this. You'd get to add some radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute every day, and you'd get a charisma buff. But like I said, he actually is a human, so the Great Weapon Master feat is a great feat. It lets you make an attack as a bonus action if you land a critical hit or reduce something to zero with an attack action. And you can take a negative five penalty to your attack roll to deal an extra 10 damage with your attacks. Bump your strength and constitution with your two free points, take deception for your skill of choice, and the soldier background for athletics and intimidation and proficiency, you're pretty great at motivating your troops, mostly because you seem like you could lose it at any moment. Kick things off as a paladin, you trained with your uncle for a bit before buying the eyeliner and My Chemical Romance t-shirts, you get two skills from the paladin list, insight and religion are Jedi musts. You're not really good at those though, maybe you weren't meant to be a Jedi. You get divine sense, letting you detect celestials, fiends or undead within 60 feet of you as an action, so if some really old guy floats over to you in a chair, you'll know if this is his first time in the living business. You also get lay on hands, giving you a pool of healing and equal to five times your paladin level that you can distribute as an action. Immediately after getting shot, Kylo slaps his hand over the wound. Obviously he's healing or just stopping the bleeding. There's no real way to tell. Second level paladins can learn some spells. Divine Favor lets you add one D4 radiant damage to every weapon attack for a minute, depending on your concentration. Shield of Faith lets you add two to a creature's AC for up to 10 minutes as a bonus action, put it on yourself and stop a blaster shot mid air. Paladins can have an amount of spells prepared equal to your charisma modifier plus half your paladin level rounded down, but there's no real obligation to do that because your best spell isn't even a spell. Divine Smite lets you spend a spell slot to add two D8 radiant damage to a weapon attack, and as you get higher level spells, you can add another d8 to that. If you're fighting a fiend or an undead, it automatically adds a d8 as well. If that wasn't enough lightsaber crushing power, you also get a fighting style. Great Weapon Master lets you reroll ones and twos on damage die with a two-handed weapon. Great Sword is a pretty great sword. It deals 2d6 slashing damage. More die means more chances to reroll the ones and twos. It's quite satisfying. Third level paladins can choose an oath or just say forget it and break the oath. Oath breakers get two options for a channel of divinity, a little something you can do once per short rest. Control undead isn't super in character, but it lets you control undead creatures that fail a wisdom save of eight plus your charisma modifier and proficiency bonus as long as their challenge rating is lower than your paladin level. This is super powerful considering a comparable ability from clerics, destroy undead, caps at destroying undead of challenge rating four or lower at the 17th level. Instead, you can basically add them to your army, which is better than than killing them in my opinion. More in character though is the dreadful aspect, forcing a wisdom saving throw on creatures of your choice within 30 feet of you, frightening them for up to a minute if they fail. They can't re-roll the failed saves unless they get 30 feet away from you. You also get divine health, like all other third level paladins, making you immune to disease. The first order doesn't use clones anymore. One of their main recruitment methods is a surprisingly comprehensive healthcare plan. Fourth level paladins get an ability score improvement. More strength means more damage, and damage is really what Kylo is all about. Fifth level paladins 
ones get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once as an action. With your big great weapon master hits, this makes killing an enemy more likely, which makes your bonus action attack more likely, which makes killing a second enemy more likely. You can also learn second level paladin spells like Zone of Truth, which forces a charisma saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot radius. Failing that, they can't deliberately tell a lie for up to 10 minutes if they don't leave their radius. You know if they succeed or fail, and they can avoid answering entirely if they want, but you can intimidate them into talking, unless there's some sort of secret force savant. That'd be kind of weird. Sixth level paladins get Aura of Protection, meaning allies within 10 feet of you can add your charisma modifier to saving throws. This includes you as well, making you just naturally better at avoiding stuff. Seventh level Oathbreakers get Aura of Hate, adding your charisma modifier to the damage rolls of an ally's weapon attack within 10 feet of you. Like Aura of Protection, this applies to you as well, making you hit harder than just about everybody else. Eighth level Paladins get another ability score improvement, cap your strength score for the most accurate hits you can have, letting you use your Great Weapon Master ability confidently and giving you a plus 17 damage modifier to your hits. That's nuts. Ninth level Paladins can learn third level spells. Bestow Curse is exclusive to the Oathbreaker list and lets you force a Wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, you can apply a Curse to them, which means one of a few options. You can pick an ability score to give them disadvantage with, both saves and checks, force disadvantage on attack rolls against you, you can make them make a wisdom save or do nothing for every turn, or just deal an extra d8 necrotic damage with each hit. All of these are fine options that last for a minute depending on your concentration, or you could use a 4d8 divine smite, that sounds pretty good to me. 10th level paladins get aura of courage, meaning allies within 10 feet of you can't be frightened by other enemies. I think they're honestly just more afraid of you than they are of anything else in the galaxy. And if you think I'm reusing material from the Darth Vader video, that's fair, but they did the same thing with Kylo Ren, so whatever. 11th level paladins get improved divine smite, adding a permanent 1d8 radiant damage to your melee weapon attacks, making your saber permanently lit, and meaning your damage rolls with each swing can be 2d6 plus 1d8 plus 17, not to mention any extra smiting that you want to add on top of that. 12th level paladins get another ability score improvement, more charisma means more damage with all of your weapon attacks and more difficult saving throws from your spells and channels. Bouncing over to barbarian now, 1st level barbarians get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier. At the moment, that's 13, which isn't great. Thankfully, as long as your armor is medium or lower, you can still enter a rage. This lets you deal extra damage with strength-based attacks, roll strength checks and saves with advantage, and resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for a minute. You can't hold concentration on any spells while raging, but technically, using spell slots for divine smites doesn't count as casting a spell, so you can still add all that extra radiant damage. Second level barbarians get reckless attack, letting you make your attacks with advantage if you're open to giving your enemies advantage to hit you. Keep in mind, your crits are better than most crits considering how many dice you're rolling for damage and you get to decide to add a big old smite after you know you crit to just add a ton of radiant damage. You also get danger sense giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws if you can see the source of damage which is nice. We're really here for the third level of barbarian where we can choose a primal path. The path of the zealot gives you divine fury meaning that when you attack while raging you can add radiant or necrotic damage equal to 1d6 plus your barbarian level to one hit per round. Go for radiant damage it's a lightsaber not a blight saber. You're also a warrior of the gods, meaning when people want to resurrect you with spells, they don't have to use material components. I don't know if this is in character. Again, haven't seen Rise of Skywalker, but it's nice. One more level of Barbarian for another quick ability score improvement. Keep investing in your charisma. It really helps your Oathbreaker stuff. Who needs a Jedi Order? You can make your own order with badass red lightsabers. Back over to Paladin now, 13th level Paladins can grab some 4th level spells. Death Ward is nice. It means the first time a creature you cast this on should drop to 0 HP, goes to 1 HP instead. But a 4th level Divine Smite while you're raging would deal 3d6 plus 5d8 plus 23 total damage, so maybe use that instead. 14th level Paladins get Cleansing Touch, letting you end a spell effect on yourself or a creature you touch automatically, an amount of times per long rest equal to your charisma modifier. You can use this to strip an enemy of some extra power, or if someone curses you, to get rid of it. 15th level Oathbreakers get Supernatural Resistance, making you permanently resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magical weapons. This is one of the best features of your rage, and now it's permanently active. Our capstone is the 16th level of Paladin for an ability score improvement. Capping your charisma modifier will make you a frightening foe, both figuratively and literally. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, your damage is insane with extra attack. You're dealing 5d6 plus 2d8 plus 26 damage per round with great weapon master attacks, another attack if it crits or kills someone, and reckless attacks to effectively double your crit chances. You also extend a ton of benefits to other melee fighters fighting with you, preventing them from being frightened, plus 5 damage to every attack, and plus 5 to every saving throw. Finally, charisma abilities are always great for roleplay, letting you lead a team or get some information you need. 
For weaknesses, getting that rage bonus prevents you from casting or concentrating on any spells, so hopefully you remember to pop your death ward pill in the morning. Just do it right after you brush your teeth. Your AC also isn't great, 16 with half plate armor. You have the strength for the 18 AC with full plate, but that would prevent you from raging and really damages your main goal. Finally, your dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are all low, making you susceptible to some nasty saving throws. Except not really, because you can add your charisma modifier to all of them and that's capped. Swing your sword wildly, break through enemy defenses, and lead the first order to conquer the galaxy. Just remember to control your rage. Losing control could leave you looking dumb in front of your subordinates. Thanks for watching, that's the last of our Star Wars videos for a good little bit. Hopefully you had as much fun watching them as I had making them. We'll be back next week with some more videos, but if you're waiting on the polled videos, those will be back New Year's Eve with Raiden from Mortal Kombat. I just needed to get a couple videos done ahead of time for the holidays.